Very good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Jenny Korius. I come from the city of Lahti, from a place with a strange name, Alipi Regional Integration Service Point. And I was asked you to tell about what is happening in Päijät region. And I can tell you a lot is happening here. <laughs> so I hope my time will be enough to share you our experience from this region to our Swedish colleagues. And I'm also the most pleasantly surprised to see many of our former clients here. So they have gone a huge journey and now they sit here. So it's wonderful. <laughs> About Jävlebori, I know very little. I've been to Jävle once in Sveriges Järnäks Museet, the Swedish Railway Museum. And here I'm trying to compare a little bit uh, what might be the differences between Sweden and, and Finland, or Jävlebori and Päijähäme in general. Uh, Päijähäme region, if you see in the map, geography is always very, very interesting. Uh, we are located very close to Helsinki. It's only one hour by train, even close one less than one hour to the Helsinki Vantaa airport. Also, uh, Lahti is located by the railway line. You can travel by train to St. Petersburg in two hours and a half, to Moscow night train. So there are three trains to Russia, four trains every day. So the location is, is very attractive. Uh, earlier, we have had a lot of people from Russia but now uh, Bayatame is attractive to all immigrants from different parts of the world. And also a lot of immigrants are moving to Lahti from other parts of Finland or to Bayatame. Uh, the location in a way is both blessing and a curse because the close proximity to Helsinki also means that many people move away. So many immigrants, when they can't find a job here, they move away. It's too easy to move to Helsinki, and that's the problem. So a person who can't find a job here can find it in Helsinki, and that's one of our biggest problems. And I think this project also is, is tackling those issues. Uh, in comparison to other areas in southern Finland, Päijät-Häme has quite affordable housing. That's one reason why people move here, very good services and also already formed communities of different nationalities. So there is already a big Arab-speaking community, Russian-speaking community, Estonian-speaking community. So it's relatively easy to come here and move here. You already know people. 2015 turned to be a turning point here, like everywhere else in Europe. Uh, before that, uh, we didn't have much immigration apart from Russia, Estonia and small numbers of spouses. Uh, before that, people tend to move here for various reasons like family relations, study, work. Uh, small numbers of water refugees had been taken to Lahti since 90s. But 2015, the thing changed. Uh, for the Swedish colleagues, it might be quite ridiculously small number. In Finland in 2015, received just over 30,000, 32,000 asylum seekers, very small number if you compare it with Sweden, but in Finland it put the system to a tremendous test. And now, four years after, I think we can be quite happy with what happened. Um, in 2016, we had eight uh, asylum centers in our area, at the moment with over 2,000 asylum seekers. Now only two of them are still working. Uh, one of them will be closed this year. So next year we will only have one reception center in Lahti and one center for intensive services called TETU, organized by Finnish Red Cross for people with uh, more needs in mental care. And this 2015 learned us to cooperate with each other in a new way. The cooperation had been good even by that, but that was the point when even more cooperation came and new, new institutions started to meet immigrants. Earlier immigrants were handled only in special spaces. Uh, now everywhere, any, any workplace, any office, anywhere, 
people who work there will meet immigrants and need skills how to meet people from all over the world. Down, you can see what are the numbers for quota refugees intake in our area. So there are only four cities or municipalities receiving quota refugees. So again, for Sweden, very small numbers, I know. <laughs> uh, 15, 15 and 20 annually. And most of them at the moment come from Syria, but also from, from Niger, from Congo and Eritrea. Uh, here you can see some statistics. So the number of foreign nationals and, and the number of native speakers that don't speak Finnish, Swedish or Sami as their native language. And in the whole area, people who, who still don't have Finnish, Finnish citizenship are over 7,000 and people who speak other than Finnish, Swedish or Sami as their native language is over 10,000. And there has been constant growth in these numbers. Here you can see uh, the municipalities and the distribution of foreign nationals in our area. As anywhere in the world, the big cities are attractive. So Lahti is attracting most of the immigrants in the area. But even in Padasjoki, there are 24 foreigners living in there. So there is no place in our area where there wouldn't be any immigrants anymore. And in all municipalities, the numbers are slowly but steadily growing. Here you can see uh, where the people come from. Uh, at the moment, in Pajathame region, Estonia has the top position. Russia being on the second place, Iraq on the third. So here you can see only the top ten. And surprisingly, you can see even Sweden here with 128 people on eighth place, uh, but that doesn't mean Swedes. Many of them are Finns who moved to Sweden in the 60s or 70s to work there, got Swedish citizenship and then returned when they get old. So many of them actually are Finns who are Swedish passport holders, but also some Swedes living here, but not, not many. Uh, so mostly this top 10 is about uh, countries that have ongoing war, like Syria, Iraq, uh, countries with dictatorship like Eritrea. So one of the biggest growing communities now is Eritrea and Lahti is called the little Asmara of Finland. Asmara is the capital of Eritrea. So we have very big visible minority from Eritrea, which is growing rapidly at the moment. Uh, to meet all the challenges, uh, the cooperation has developed very much. Uh, here are just a list of some of the stakeholders in this work. Uh, we have uh, services for immigrants, which is a regional service, uh, which uh, takes care of refugee reception in the area. And then we have regional interface and service point Alibi, which I represent, a multicultural center Multikulti. Uh, then we have uh, all the municipalities and their services where people may need, meet immigrants, it's daycare, it's schools, uh, housing, anywhere. Uh, then we have all the state, state services, TE services, which is the employment services, and Kela, which is the National Pension Fund, which is responsible for, for the benefits. Uh, then we have very active churches and parishes, the Lutheran Church, the Russian Orthodox Church, the Pentecost 